Joining us now is psychologist Dr. Paula Bloom from Kaiser Permanente. Welcome, Dr. Bloom. Thank you so yes. much for having me here. So glad you're here. Thank you for making us feel so comfortable to I sit know. like this um, for this interview. Yeah. We're going to get into a cozy mm -hmm. conversation that yeah. is not always comfortable for some people to have, starting with the stigma yeah. around mental health care. What can you tell us is probably maybe some of the most common things totally. mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that are dealing with in that area? Uh, there's so many things. Thankfully, it's getting better. Mm -hmm. We still have a lot of work to do, right? But there's kind of three big things with um, stigma and misconceptions, right? The first one is that mental illness is rare. It isn't. Mm. So many people have mental health issues. You don't know it. Why? Because they're getting treated and living their lives, yeah. right? It is not rare. Second one, weakness. It's not weakness. You don't tell somebody who has appendicitis that they're weak. They need to figure it out, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, and so I think that mental health is physical health, and we really, really need to acknowledge that, That's right? right? Same thing. Another thing is violence. Mm -hmm. People with mental illness are more likely to be the victim of violence than the perpetrator of violence. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, if you hear things, you know, when things are talked about in the media and such, and somebody had a mental health condition, there's millions of people with mental illness that aren't violent. Yeah, and obviously society is putting so much of this on us. How do socioeconomic factors play a role in this mental health for all ages? Thank you for bringing that up. It's really important, right? So in lots of different ways, um, it's really hard to work on some deep work that you need to do mm. if you don't have enough food. Right. If you yeah. don't have a safe place to live, mm -hmm. right? Your basic needs need to be met. Yeah. And for a lot of folks in our world and in our country, that is not the case. So another thing that we know is that when you have more control over your schedule, for example, that helps with mental health because it helps you to balance work mm. and family. Jeez. I couldn't relate more to Speaking that right now. Doc. But yes. guess what? <laughs> a lot of folks, when, you're, when you um, are in a marginalized community, a lot of times you have the kind of work that you don't have time off. Mm -hmm. You don't have the ability mm -hmm. to flex your hours. Mm -hmm. If you don't work, you don't get paid, right? So those things have a real effect on, you know, people want to live their lives and work and take care of their kids. And that can be really hard to do mm -hmm. when you don't have as much freedom. It's worth everything mm -hmm. for some people to be able to manage, especially stress, anxiety, sure. practice mindfulness. Do you have any tips sure. on how to do that? Totally. So first of all, you know, the word mindfulness is this big buzzword, right? You know what it means? Paying attention on purpose, mm. non-judgmentally. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. And so one of the first things that helps with mental health is to realize we are all storytellers. We tell ourselves all kinds of crap in our head. We say all kinds of things. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. I can't do this. I'm not worthless. I need to weigh this. I have to dress like this. You know, we tell ourselves all kinds of stories. So mindfulness, what it does is it helps you take a step back and be, wait, wait, mm -hmm. just because I think it doesn't make it true. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, another thing is to recognize, like, I love social media because mm -hmm. I love the connection, but also the whole yeah. compare and despair, right? Amen. We are all curating our lives, right? A lot of people aren't putting the bad stuff out there. Nope. Mm -hmm. They know they're not putting the bad stuff out there, but they assume other people are putting their whole lives. We are not here to compare ourselves to others, yeah. right? Yeah. You got to be you and whoever you are is okay. And another thing I would say is having some level of routine helps to anchor you. Mm, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it's exercise or diet or sleep, having some rituals and routines mm. can be very, very helpful in helping you kind of get grounded in your life. You have helped us. I'm My goodness, you. so many incredible tips. Thank you guys. And thanks for making me help. feel so comfortable. Yes, I, yes. I mean, we were happy to sit with our feet up <laughs> with you. This is the most comfortable interview we have mm. definitely had on this show. And I am yeah. sure that people walked away with some good information. Excellent. From this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.